This is Springfield Armory's new offering in the Mod 2 line of XDs. This is the 9mm Mod 2 4 inch in gray. Now this is their tactical gray color and other than that it's pretty much the same as the other Mod 2 4 inches. Really nothing new here in terms of features or function except the gray color. So if you don't like the gray color, not that much exciting about this, but this gray color happens to be my favorite. I do like gray. It also uh, is the same kind of color we use in our targets. Let's go take a look at the targets and talk about why our gray on our target is not consistent, right? The gray on the Mod 2 is very consistent. It's a nice, deep, dark, tactical, awesome gray. The gray on our targets isn't consistent. The reason we don't do a consistent coloring on our targets is because this area is the preferred target area when we're shooting at a human torso. If we represent this as the silhouette of the human, we think about the human torso, we want to hit into the high center chest. If we're trying to stop this threat, this threat is coming at us, this high center chest represents the area underneath the collarbone, above the diaphragm, and in between the nipples. Honestly, that's where the good stuff is. Now you'll notice that inside of our programs, we don't use uh, targets that have anatomical structures built in. The fact is you can't see those anatomical structures. You can't even see collarbones and, and diaphragms when you're, you're in a fight. So if you think about it, this area actually just kind of comes off the points of the shoulders, right? If I come off the point of my shoulder, that's where the collarbone is. It, it's generally underneath the width of the head, if we think about in between the nipples. And it's an area about the size of a pie plate or an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. If I were to just start drawing in internal organs in here and spines, now all of a sudden if I took a shot and let's say I missed it low, and I hit down here, but I happened to hit the line I drew in for the spine, or maybe I had a line in here for a femoral artery. I might start rationalizing that that was good or that was okay. The fact is, if I'm training to defend myself or others in a typical defensive situation, I'm going to be firing shots rapidly at that high center chest, trying to break down as much of the good stuff the bad guy needs to keep fighting as possible. And that low shot isn't one that I can count on having a high probability of actually helping me. So having hit the artist's version of where that organ or that artery or where that bone structure is doesn't really help me. I need to just kind of be ish in this area. The other thing you'll notice all along the lines of the ish in the high center chest is that on our targets, these areas are fuzzy, right? Even on these target areas down here that simulate uh, the, the, another high center chest size area, that's, it's fuzzy, it's gray, right? It's gray here, it shades from the light gray to the dark gray, even in the center of the face shots that we're talking about to stop someone immediately or if they have a hostage or if they're hiding behind cover and just peeking out. Because all of this is a generalization, right? Every human body is a little bit different. Every angle, every movement. And remember, the bad guy will be moving, even if he's just breathing. Right? If he's flinching because you're pointing a gun at him, if he's moving towards you and he's rocking back and forth, all of those things dictate that there is no one perfect area where we can say that's a heart shot and that isn't, or that's a spine shot and that isn't, if we're really trying to practice not just for the range for this piece of paper, but for any threat, any human body that we might have to fight. So if you think about it, we're in a fight, we're out here, we're training, I'm going to drive this gun out and take a shot, and we can see that's definitely inside of the high center chest. If I were to take a shot and fire maybe early on the way out from the holster over rotating and shooting when I shouldn't be shooting, I might be way over there on the piece of paper. Now, I can see that's clearly not into the high center chest. That shot may have scared a real bad guy, but I can't count on that. So what I really want to do is fire a lot of shots into that high center chest and torso area. And then I want to come up and evaluate. I'm going to say, okay, all of these shots are definitely in the high center chest area. This one is still on the torso, but it's not in my preferred area. That's a miss. Why was I drifting off to the left? And this one that's right on the edge, that's in that ish area. Well, on some people, that might have been a good hit, broken up the lungs, maybe hit the diaphragm, maybe broken some ribs, thrown some shrapnel into something important. On another person, maybe a skinnier person or a person who turned to the left or turned to the right a little bit, maybe that shot wasn't any good. So there's a high probability when we hit the center of this light gray rectangle that we're doing good. There's a lower probability that we're doing any good in the dark gray. And if we get out here into the white, it's no good. So training on the balance of speed and precision target, I want to be in the gray, preferably the light gray. If you like gray, you might want to look at the Mod 2 4-inch XD from Springfield Armory in the new tactical gray color.